You know, the thing, um, about 15 years ago, I went out to California just to have a conversation about, with a group of people, that if NASA were to come to your community, you know, what would we do with you? And so, sat and listened to all these people in San Francisco, and every single one of them said, you know, what's different about NASA is the point of view. You've given us a point of view for the universe and of our Earth that we never had before. You know, those of us that work at NASA are going, yeah, whatever. But listening to everyone say that, it really hit me. The point of view that we give is this big, you know, universal, there's the sky's no longer the limit thing. So I, I love human space flight. So I love hearing the stories from our astronauts. I love seeing their pictures. I love seeing the pictures of Saturn and all of that too. But the human element, which is back to the storytelling, when you can really get that feeling of what is it like when a bathroom breaks? Let's just be real. Not fun. So not fun anywhere. Less fun <laughs> in space. So um, we want to, if the mentors could come up, we'll talk about what they have to offer this afternoon. You can um, learn and dig in with the mentors. Come on up, guys and uh, wit people, guys and gals, guys and whatever the generic term for that is. We, us. And do we have a microphone, or, or do you just want to come here? And then again, what we're going to do is we'll just plant yourself, and then we'll all gather around you. OK, so uh, I'll, I'll just start. I'm Jason. I'm from NASA. I'm here with uh, my team. This is, uh... no, this is uh, awesome. So yeah, the, we're gonna have a bunch of people say what, what skills they bring to the room. Um, personally, me, I work in the OCIO, uh, Office of Chief Information Officer. Deborah is my boss, Beth's my boss, uh, Elizabeth's my boss this week. <laughs> um, but we, one of the things I'm lucky enough to do, so I got to start NASA as an enterprise developer, then go in and do missions, go in and do semantic web stuff. Um, so you get to wear multiple hats. Recently, I got to go and work in the o OCIO office and do websites, do data. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and I'm gonna tell you about it today. Um, so really quick, uh, we're gonna go over uh, some of the web resources we have, how to get to our data, how to make API calls, um, stuff like that. So we'll have a lot more details later um, and then some more uh, folks can speak, thanks. Sorry, you want us to use this mic or that mic? Let's just use both. Yeah. There's two of us, so we'll use both mics. Sorry, We're inseparable, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm supposed to be doing my thesis review, but I'm skipping for the beginning. No, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll leave. It's I'm awesome so that she excited. came back. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you know that we love wearables because we were talking about our earlier project, which, by the way, we didn't mention. We won Best of Hardware for New York and went into Compete International. We also got an honorable mention in a separate... Um, uh, the Kennedy, Kennedy Center. Space Center yeah. had a separate wearables competition that we also got to enter, and they actually made up an honorable mention for us because we didn't win. There was only one prize. They loved us so much, they just invented it. So we thought that was awesome. So, <laughs> Okay, so what we're doing today is we can't let you take home parts, but we can give you an introduction to touch parts and do what we do. And this is an example. I call this my kanzashi, or a Japanese hair ornament. Um, this is actually made with a microcontroller and LEDs and you program them. So today, you will learn how to do such things if you hang out with us. And Nikki's also wearing earrings yeah, she made. Yeah, this is a wearable. Um, this is simply, uh, I, I, ha I like hack a lot of jewelry and uh, clothing. And basically, I just, it's a really small surface mount LED with a, a very tiny coin cell battery and actually sewn in with um, conductive thread. So, so one of the things we learned from the last challenge that was fun was actually making wearable things in space. Like, I love that you said the cufflink thing. I was like, yes. Um, because I think that those are the kind of solutions that you're going to need. So we have the kind of crafting with electronic skills that we'll be sharing, as well as small microprocessors that can be embedded into clothing. And also, um, these are using Arduino, which is open source, which means there's plenty of code everyone can share out there. And you can also use it to make robots. So learn this and you yeah. will conquer the world. And we'll be, we're sitting over there, so yeah, come get us. That's what we'll be going over. Thanks, thank you. 
Hi, my name is Sandhya. You can call me Sandy. And please excuse me for the severe sunburn. I hope it gets better tomorrow. So um, you heard my GM, Sandy Carter, talk about five career hacks. I want to take you on a journey which is social, technical, harnesses data. And the name of that journey is IBM Bluemix. So uh, here on the screen, you can see behind me as well, we have created a landing page that makes it easy for you to see how the challenges that NASA has posted on outer space, robotics, humans, Earth, all those categories have been mapped already for you with code to see how you can solve those challenges quickly. So the key word is quickly. Bluemix is platform as a service, and it is just to enable you. Like just now, you saw wearables, Arduino, any bracelets, um, earrings, you name it. Uh, heart monitors are, and Raspberry Pis, on and on. We are enabling you by giving you an Internet of Things foundation, which uses MQTT protocol that's open source. It uses a Node-RED editor, which is open source. So we just enable you to quickly come up the applications with the devices. We are not coming in between the SDK and the device. We are behind the SDK, giving you a platform for ease of development. We are giving you analytics <coughs> through geospatial analytics, through analytics for Hadoop. We have not only IBM software in Bluemix, we also have third-party software like Pitney Bowes, Twilio, Twitter, and on and on. So please go uh, into bluemix.net. Some people I see here were also at a previous hackathon called DataFest, and they have already learned about Bluemix. And I will be always ar around during this time, as well as during all the hours in the hackathon. So please come, and I'll show you how it is enabling you. It is nothing proprietary. It is based on open source Cloud Foundry. So please do uh, take a look at bluemix.net. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Dave Pentecost. Um, I'm a crabby old dude with a gray beard, but I discovered recently I think I have the soul of an 11-year-old girl. So just treat old crabby guys like they're 11-year-old girls. You'll do okay. Um, two quick stories since we're telling stories. Uh, 20 years ago, um, a group of very determined, outraged women discovered that our neighborhood was the only place where boys' clubs did not merge with girls' clubs. So there were boys' only boys' clubs, three of them, nothing for girls. They started their own with a shopping cart full of art supplies. Uh, in 2010, we broke ground, and now we're in a 30,000-square-foot science, art, music, and food center on the Lower East Side, and we're starting to really have fun. One thing we built is a planetarium, a real planetarium, not an inflatable, um, and uh, I get to spend most of my time there. Um, so I've brought some... Uh, well, that's one story. Uh, the second story... Uh, which has to do with what I'm showing today. Um, it's a little science fiction story. By the middle of the 21st century, man had gone to Mars and the moon, but it was discovered that men could not tolerate those long space voyages. So they had to send women on the starship. And so they sent the seven Pleiades sisters, they called them. And, but before they left the solar system, they stopped on a, uh, on a meteor, on an asteroid, excuse me, and created a memorial to their childhoods uh, that they called the memory machine. And we built this in the Unity game engine and projected it up in our dome with girl-made stories, music, um, artifacts, 3D artifacts. So we're having some fun with Unity. I'm going to be showing some of that. And the other thing is I brought a little hardware hack, which is Adafruit NeoPixels, um, a little panel that shows 
a year animation, uh, LED panel is showing a year animation of CO2 levels around the world. Gets very red and orangey in the uh, northern hemisphere in the wintertime. It's just a very colorful display, but it's an example of how you can very easily take data that we're getting from NASA and NOAA and make cool things with it. So check me out and I'll tell you why I think I have the soul of an 11 year old girl. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I guess um, I wanted to tell you about two other things that I've, um, one thing that I've made recently and something else I want to make. Um, I work a lot with my niece. She's 17, um, she's called Charlotte and she's a singer-songwriter in Scotland. Um, and recently we went to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas together. Um, and so I made some things for her and we did a, we told our stories together to about 200 people. I was really proud of her for doing that. And then at the end of that, she sang a song um, and she used the, the notebook, the MIDI piano notebook. Um, she used a postcard that was a drum kit. Um, and I made her a, a bracelet that was percussive so she could touch sound effects on it um, as, she, as she was singing. Um, and I also converted her hairbrush into a percussive musical instrument. Um, and I chose a hairbrush just because I wanted to something that was just really weird and was really different. <laughs> um, because I didn't want to do anything that was predictable. I wanted to just create something that was different that could inspire people. If a hairbrush can be a musical instrument, then, then anything can. And she used her loop pedal and she looped the sounds that she created and she performed an awesome song that she'd, that she'd written. So I was massively inspired by her. Um, something else I want to do um, is, the, is the drum kit poster. I want to create an internet of drum kit posters. So you can tap away some drum beats um, on a poster and it will be Wi-Fi enabled, it would go to a server which would pick a random drum poster somewhere else in the world and those drum beats would come out and then you might hear it as you're walking down the street and then you could like send some drum beats back um, and then the person in the other country would, would hear it. Because um, I kind of, I was thinking about communication and long distance communication and the past and storytelling and I reckon that jungle drums is probably the oldest form of long distance communication. So it's like, I want to I wanna bring that back. Yeah, wouldn't that be so cool? It'd be so cool. Um, so yeah, so I would be happy to, to just to tell anyone um, who wants to pass by about how some of the things I make, how it works, and how I want to create a dev kit to let anybody play with this sort of stuff, which I hopefully I'll have done in a, in a couple of weeks. But um, actually, it's not really about what I can tell you guys. Um, I want to be inspired by any ideas you've got for anything that you want to create. I'm massively inspired by my niece, Charlotte. Um, and so, yeah, um, it's not kind of like what I can do for you guys, but come and share some amazing ideas about what you can do with interactive paper. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Christian Hugerheid. I'm a data solutions architect with Socrata. You probably see a bunch of us around with hoodies like this or track jackets like that. But you've been hearing a lot about data and why it's important and hopefully productive things you can do with it and use with it. But my little mentorship session is going to be a little bit more foundational. It's asking questions like, why is using open data important? How to find it? How to use it? And how to access it? So if you feel like you don't quite have your bearings there yet, and you just want to learn about how to find this data in the first place, and then maybe how to start thinking about using it, then stop by my table right there on the corner, and we can talk about that kind of stuff. Thanks, Christian. My name is Mark Silverberg. My table is right over there. I'm going to be talking a little bit more on the technical side. Once you find awesome data, what can you do with it? What is an API? Why are APIs awesome? And uh, how can you use JavaScript uh, web visual web visualizations to uh, make cool stuff. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike. I work with Second Muse. We've been working with NASA for the past four years on the International Space Apps Challenge. Um, 
So I met Katie, you've heard her story earlier on, at the first hackathon she ever attended, which was the first one I ever organized. Um, she and I and Elizabeth have been uh, organizing and planning hackathons for years. And we've done, we've been involved in hundreds of them, if not thousands at this point. Um, a big part of that are, of hackathons are figuring out what you want to work on and what the uh, challenges are and how you actually interpret those challenges and how you decide what you're going to build over the course of that weekend. Um, I will be leading a group over there in the corner. Uh, I might be joined by some of my colleagues at different points uh, during the afternoon to talk just about that. So um, we're going to use the Space Apps Challenge challenge list as a basis for that. We're going to look at different challenges um, and discuss how might you address them, how might you think about them. Um, earlier in the day, uh, there was the quote from Albert Einstein that was mentioned about you spend the first 55 minutes of an hour defining the problem and then the last five minutes trying to solve it. Um, this is really, uh, in a lot of ways, about those first 55 minutes. How do you look at a challenge that's put out there? How do you figure out what it is that you're really trying to solve and what are the building blocks to get there? I also want to add a few folks had questions about challenges that they've or projects that they want to work on, whether it be at Space Apps or elsewhere, like an NLP problem, um, other challenges that have come up. Feel free to bring those to the table. We'll talk about how to make them feasible. We'll talk about how to rally a team behind them. We'll talk about how to what, what you want to get done in the course of a weekend and just kind of that action of how do you turn something, turn a challenge into something you're going to actually work on um, for that weekend. All right? Well, that'll give it back to Beth. OK, so um, a little bit of housekeeping. But before that, Kate, we have a Spacey Sounds Challenge. I keep, I keep saying this, but we have a bunch of NASA sounds we put available for the Spacey Sound Challenge. So if you guys figure out how to use space sounds with your instruments, do that we could, oh, it'd be so much fun. So I may be over there playing with your stuff. So for those of you on the live stream audience, um, we are, it's going to get a little messy. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to have the robotics, uh, where we hope to kind of zero in on some like playing with stuff. And then we also are going to have some presentations from Jason and, and our Socratic guys to kind of talk about where our NASA.data.nasa.gov data .nasa new website. So we're going to show you the developer resources. Um, so bear with us as we get a little messy, but we still want you to stay online. And then we're going to come back. We have this until 2.45. We're going to come back together. And then this afternoon, for those of you online, we're going to have a kind of a wrap up. And then we will have a panel of a women in NASA, women in data panel. And that will be the end of the day. So awesome. I can't wait. Point break. Oh, Elizabeth, come here. What? This like, oh, so we changed it. Never mind. So there's a break at 2.45. We will get to go um, put some sugar in and all that, and then we'll be back. So never mind, audience. We'll be here at 4. And two seconds before we stop, Elizabeth, please come up. I just have to say all power, Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth has just, I, you've just been incredible. She is our Space Apps Community Manager. So she's uh, had 10,000 people emailing her <laughs> for months. And she has had these once a week um, phone calls in three different time zones. And I, it, you've just, it, you've been tremendous. And we have 136 locations that are going to start tomorrow. Honestly, 10,000 people, you've done all that. And on top of that, she took on this, the data boot camp. A month ago, we didn't have this schedule. We didn't have this place. We didn't have anything. And Elizabeth, I just can't. Just can, I'm sorry. I love you. You're just awesome. So everyone, please give her lots of love and thank her. Guys, as you can imagine, I jump at the chance to work with this team and work with NASA. It is amazing. So I'm so glad to have you here. Enjoy the breakout sessions. <laughs>